Hey guys, thanks for joining. It's Andrew here from Black Panel Press. And today I'm going to be showing you how to do your layout for your comic or graphic novel. For that, we'll use a layout program, in this case, uh, Adobe InDesign. There are some alternatives out there, like Quark Express, Microsoft Publisher, but uh, Adobe probably has the most popular one, um, and so we'll be using that. I want to talk for a minute about the difference between a layout program and, say, a photo editing program. So a layout is designed to manage all your pages, your text in one place, um, and uh, your document settings and size and everything like that. Uh, photo editing is, well, you know what Photoshop can be used for. Um, it's not ideal to do all of your lettering and your layouts in a program like Photoshop. And so I'll show you a few reasons why as we get in here. So I'm going to start a brand new document. All right, and um, so we have a series of images, and we're going to build our, our document from that. So I'm going to select a new file. Okay. So here's our, our dialog window here. So first thing we need to do is uh, select the size of the document. I like to use inches. In the publishing industry in North America, usually we use inches, even in Canada. Um, in the rest of the world, it's going to be millimeters and, and centimeters in, in a lot of places, especially in Europe. You'll notice that A4 is a common size, which is similar to our letter size, but not exactly. So I'm going to do inches, okay? So by default, um, I have 6 by six by 9. This is probably based on a previous um, book that I've set up in the past, okay? So what I want to do first is um, I want to check on the image size. So I'm going to go to my folder of images. So here I just have a bunch of images. Let's see what format they're actually in. So they're actually in TIFF uh, format. These are not layered, but TIFF is a format that allows you to layer your files. So that can be very useful. Um, but these ones are not layered, but they are uh, kind of the raw images. You can see there are four megabytes. That's right. So, um, now we'll look at the dimensions. I can just hover here, in fact. 2953 by 3543. So a good rule of thumb, you want to have 300 pixels per inch. Okay. So, so let's see what an ideal size would be here. So we're going back to the details. 2953 by 3543. 2953 by, divided by 300, that gives you uh, 9.8 inches okay that doesn't mean that it's going to be the size that we're going to choose but that's I would say the maximum size because I don't like to print any less than 300 dpi okay which is dots per inch but also interchangeable with ppi which is pixels per inch okay and then we have three by three divided by 300 that will be the, the length so that's 11 so the maximum we can have is I think it was 9.8 by 11.8, right? So that's the maximum we can have. Okay. All right, so now that we have the dimensions of our image and we want to pick a trim size. The trim size is just a word for the dimensions of your book, um, the width and the height. So uh, what I like to do is to pick uh, something that's going to be um, a popular trim size, and so I use this Ingram Spark calculator. I'm going to get to this a little bit later. Ingram Spark is a distributor that you can work with to publish your books across the world. And they have a free calculator here to help you estimate the cost of a print job if you want to print with them. This is more of an on-demand kind of a printing service, um, but uh, I like to use their trim sizes. And so they have all these standard trim sizes here. The reason you want to go with a standard trim size is one. Um, you're going to be able to print with a wider variety of printers, so that keeps options open for you. And secondly, you want to have a trim size that's uh, standard because it's easier for retailers to accept your book. So if it's very oversized or very small, likewise, um, it can be difficult for the retailer to find a place on the shelf for your book. So that's why I like to stick with the, the standard trim sizes, okay? All right, so... Um, we're going to calculate the aspect ratio. So what we have is um, to calculate aspect ratio, it's just your width divided by your height. Okay. So that gives us um, this aspect ratio, 0.83. Okay. Not technically, not, uh, we're kind of converting a ratio to a decimal to help us here. 
So, so now we have the 0 0.83. So let's look for, remember that the, the length was around 11.8, okay, right, by 9.8. So I'm looking at the trim sizes, which are, um, actually, I want to go a little bit smaller because uh, when I printed a smaller trim size, it's, uh, the book is more portable. Um, people tend to prefer to uh, a smaller trim size uh, to a point, and also it's cheaper for print costs, okay? So what I actually want to do is find something that's going to be more around 9 or 10 inches, okay? 10 inches. All right, so 10 inches. So then basically what I want to do here is I just multiply this by 10 inches, which will be the height, and that'll give me the width, okay? And of course, it's going to be 8.3, so 8.3. So let's see if we find anything that's going to be, I'll look at that. So the closest one, I think, is going to be 8 by 10. Right, so uh, you can pick your, there's a, a variety of factors, right? They're going to influence your, your trim size. If your art is very detailed, or has a lot of text, opt for a larger trim size because it's going to make it more readable and it's going to enhance the experience because the reader is going to be able to focus on those on those details. But if your art is kind of simpler, um, you know, just a few colors and then not much text, then opt for a smaller one because it's going to lower your cost and it's going to make the book more portable. Um, so I'm going to go with the 10 by 8, okay? So you can use this calculator here to calculate the cost of a, of a print job. Uh, for our purposes, we don't need to get into that right now. We'll come back to that at a later point. All right, so I'm going to select uh, 8 by 10 inches.